datang dari Jaklia sudah. And we need to come to the cross. Bagaimana kamban wan cakap dia pun nak? Because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Does that get you excited? I mean, does that get you excited? Yeah, it sure does. And I want to encourage you, you know, go and uh, have a look at some of the books and stuff over there because uh, it's a great thing to invest into, into the lives of men and women around the world. Um, I'm going to share two songs with you. Ladies and gentlemen, you only get one life. Did you know that? I know we live in the computer generation and kids think that if they die they can just resurrect and get three more lives and move on to the next level but it doesn't work that way you get one life this is not a dress rehearsal this is not mucking around this is the one you get if you mess your life up if you make bad decisions if you waste your one life if you throw it away doing stuff that's not really important you don't get a second chance you don't get another go at it this is it so I want to uh, have a bit of fun this morning is that okay I th- Mueller Community Church is a pretty fun place, I've heard. So I want to have a bit of fun. I want to share with you a song from Africa. It's called One Life. I'd encourage you to kind of clap along and stomp your feet. and Well, maybe not. Well, maybe a little, okay? A little bit of stomping. Um, but just relax and enjoy yourself. But the message is really important. You get one life. You don't get two or three, just one. You need to use it for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's called One Life. Thanks, guys. You've got one life. Give it now to Jesus. You've got how many? There you go, one life. Give it to the Lord, for He loves you. Ladies, like down for you. Come on. Come, give your heart to the Lord. You've got one life. Give it now to Jesus. You've got one life. Give it to the Lord, for He loves you. Ladies, lie down for you. Come, give your heart to the Lord. There is someone here who's lonely. Your life you despise. Or you're struggling with a secret state of sin. Your life is much more precious than you realize. Oh, it's time to turn around and seek your destiny in Him. Come on, close 
You've got one life. Give it now to Jesus. You've got one life. Come on and give it to the Lord, for He loves you. Laid His life down for you. Come give your heart to the Lord. There is someone here who's struggling with the hurt and pain. There are those who seem successful, but within. your life to Him. Okay, clap along, but I'll, I'll teach you to sing it with me. You've got one like that. You've got one life. Give it now to Jesus. Give it now to Jesus. You've got one life. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. For He loves you. He laid His life down for you. He laid His life down for you. Come give your heart to the Lord. Again, come on, you've got one life, come on. You've got one life. That's right, this guy. Give it now to Jesus. You've got how many? One life. Come on and give it to the Lord. For he loves you. Laid his life down for you. Come give your heart to the Lord. Sing it one more time. Come on, sing it out with me. You've got one life. You've got one life. Give it back to Jesus. You've got one life. Come on and give it to the Lord. For He loves you. Lay His life down for you. Yeah, come give your heart to the Lord. try this one. Oh, it works. Cool. So you have one life and uh, we urge you this morning to give it to the Lord. Don't waste it. But one day, if you give your one life to Jesus, we will stand together in glory. We will gather around the great throne of God and worship him forever and ever. Who's looking forward to that? And we need to love one another because eternity is a really long time to spend with people you don't like. So you need to start now loving one another. But we will stand together and we will worship the Lord forever and ever. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. Uh, Are you? Have you asked Jesus into your life? Are you coming with us? Because we want you to come with us. We urge you to receive Christ and come with us. It's going to be a blast forever and ever and ever. Thank you, guys. And when we get to glory... And as we stand around that throne and we sing and praise the Lord, I believe, thank you, that this will be the number one hit on Heaven's Hit Parade. It'll be slow starting, but it'll be here. And some of you might know this song as well. the more 
Thank you, Darren. Darren's really enjoyed here this morning, especially with these musos. I tell you, fiddles and, and uh, cello, cellos <laughs> and, and pianos and all the rest of it. It's just been a, such a tremendous time this morning. And so uh, great to see you this morning. Boy, oh boy, it's uh, terrific. And people that we've known in other days, I won't say old faces, I say other days, and uh, just terrific to see you here this morning. Where's Bev? I, you know, I think she's over here somewhere. And uh, there's so many others that we've known. There's uh, Is Morse down there. Let me tell you about Is. We were flying along in his little plane one day, way out there in the Never Never Outback. And he said, I think I'll go down to that station down there. I said, you're kidding, there's no airport down there. He said, the drive up to the front uh, gate will be the one we'll use. And so we flew in there. I don't know, I think the, the wings are about a, a foot beside, um, away from the fences as we slewed up to the front uh, door of this place. And uh, this lady came out, way out there in the outback. She said, is. She said, I woke up this morning, I just needed encouragement from the Lord, and I prayed, Lord, please, out here in the outback, I just need encouragement, and your plane came by that morning, that was fantastic. Another time, we flew into this little town, and the airport was a little way out of the town, over this hill, and uh, he said, Bill, we'll go into this town, I said, it's a fair way to walk, is, don't worry, I got my motorbike, and he had this tiny little mini motorbike. And uh, we hopped onto this mini motorbike, you know, <laughs> and uh, he's right up the front and I'm on the back nearly falling off, two of us, you know. So we came up over the hill and into the town. And here's these two guys on this mini bike coming into town. And everybody in every shop came out on their front verandas to see these guys going past. How in the world, hundreds of kilometres from anywhere, and you guys are coming in together on a little motor, mini motorbike. We had a ball that day, and uh, just so great to see you, Ez and uh, Val, this morning. And Dot and I are so thrilled to be able to come and to share with you. And uh, we're going to make the message short, sharp, and shiny. I promise you. Uh, someone, I think uh, Dot says, when Bill preaches, don't give him a watch, give him a calendar. But not this morning. We're going to make it uh, nice and brief this morning. Go over to the books still this, this morning. This is our latest little booklet, The Battle. It's putting on the whole armor of God. We're going into an antichrist spirit in our society today, and we need to be suited up. And uh, it's very, very important that we know how to put on the whole armor of God. So go out there, buy one afterwards. If you can't buy one, steal one. But get one this morning because this material is very, very important. I can't emphasize that enough because of the days in which we're going into. Well, I want you to turn with me this morning to the book of um, Peter. First Peter, please, at ch uh, chapter... We're looking at chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, and the theme is, uh, what's the answer? Broken relationships, discouragement, fears and failures, what's the answer to the whole thing? Well, I just want to give you this one little verse this morning. This is absolute gospel dynamite, one verse we want to share with you today, and as I share this verse I believe this is the key to the whole thing. There was a little girl one time lost in London. Uh, her, she was with her mother, but she got separated in a, in a big crowd. You can imagine in London. And uh, a policeman came up to this little girl who was crying. And he didn't know what to say to her. Uh, but you, where's your mommy? I can't find her. Where are you living? I don't know. And uh, he said, look, is it near Westminster Abbey? No, I, I don't know that place. What about Buckingham Palace? No, we haven't been down there. Uh, what about uh, Big Ben, the big clock? No, I've seen it, but no, no, that's no good. He said, uh, look, um, what about Charing Cross? Charing Cross is where they measure all the distances out of London. She said, that's right, the cross. She said, take me to the cross. I know I can get home from there. And that's what I want to do with you for just a few moments, friends, this morning as we wrap up a, a wonderful service. I want to take you now with me because this is the answer. If the whole of the peninsula, Brisbane, Australia, came to the cross, how different our lives would be. 
And so I want to share with you this one little verse, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. Dear friends, this is the word of God. People have given their lives blood for this book down through the centuries. And we need to give it the reverence that it deserves. I hope that you love the word of God. So please stand with me as we read this one verse together. 1 Peter chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 18. Listen carefully as I read to you the word of God. Verse 18. For Christ died once for sins, once for all. The righteous for the unrighteousness, unrighteous to bring us to God. He was put to death in the body, but are made alive by the Spirit. Let me read it again, please. For Christ died for sins, once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. He was put to death in the body, but was made alive by the Spirit. Father, we pray now that as we turn to your word, for those here today of our friends who are not sure that they have the gift of eternal life, we pray that in these next few moments, they'll know absolutely for certain that they can walk out of here knowing that our sins are forgiven. Jesus is in our hearts and we have that wonderful gift of eternal life. We ask it, Lord Jesus, in your great and mighty name because you're so holy, holy, holy. Amen. Thank you and be seated, please. And let me share with you this very simple but very, very important <clears throat> message with you today. I just want to give you four little points. Listen to them. The substitutionary purpose of the cross. I want to look too at the suffering passion of the cross. The settled provision of the cross. And then to the saving power of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. The substitutionary purpose of the cross. Why did Jesus Christ die on the cross? That's the key. Christ died for our sins. Notice he died the righteous for the unrighteous. There's only two ways to die. We can die in our sins or we can die in the Lord. Very important to realize that of ourselves, we are unrighteous. There's three kinds of, uh, of righteousness. There's self-righteousness, and that's where so many people are today. They think they're, they're pretty good. You know, they don't, haven't murdered too many people, and they're, they're okay. Self-righteous. And they think that they can get into heaven by somehow getting in there on their, their own terms and their own good works. Never do it. We'll never do it. We'll never get into heaven that way. All the religions of the world are based on that. What's the difference between Christianity and the religions of the world? Simply this. The religions of the world, it's man trying to reach up to God through their own efforts and good works. Christianity is, the, is God in the person of Jesus Christ coming down into this world, living a life of perfection, going to the cross, dying for our sins, rising again from the dead so that he can give us eternal life as we receive him into our life. That's the difference. <laughs> it's not our works but it's the fact that Jesus Christ, by his grace, gives us eternal life. We can't earn that ourselves. My friend Dave Ware is here today. And uh, <clears throat> just look at two books. Here's one book, The Life and Times of Jesus Christ. Here's another book, The Life and Times of Dave Ware. <laughs> and so I opened this book. <laughs> I didn't apply it to me. I wanted to apply it to him because it's hideous. Look at all the things that he's thought about. The deeds that he's done, oh, the, it's terrible. I look at all the pages. This is terrible. I look at this book over here, The Life of Times of Jesus Christ, and I see this wonderful life full of perfection and beauty. But God does a wonderful thing. He takes the cover of this book over to this book. He takes the cover of this book over to this book. So when God now looks at this book, 
He doesn't see all of Dave's failings. He sees that's covered by the person of his son, Jesus Christ. And over here, this book, well, Jesus Christ has taken Dave's and every one of us here this morning, all of our sin, all of our shortcomings, all of our failures, all of our rebellion against God, all of our self-centeredness and selfishness, Jesus Christ died for our sins. He took all our punishment. He, he is the righteous for the unrighteous. I, I went to visit my sister. She died a little while in hospital, a little, little while ago in hospital. Broke my heart. My sister and I were close, and uh, she was dying of cancer. And uh, Dot and I were so brokenhearted as we saw her little emaciated body just, you know, the, losing the hair and little skeletal features and just visiting her. And we just saw her dying slowly. And as I looked down at this little body, I just thought to myself, if only I could take all of that cancer out of that body and put it into my body, then she could be saved. But of course, you can't do it. But friends, the most wonderful thing this morning is that Jesus Christ can take all of our sin when he hung on that cross, the righteous for the unrighteous, so that he might bring us to God. That's the power of the cross. You see, listen to me. You'll never hear anything more important than this this morning. We will never get to heaven unless our sin is forgiven. And the only place our sin can be forgiven is at the cross of Jesus Christ. And there are a number of you here this morning. You've had spiritual experiences. You may know church doctrine and practice, have communion, sung songs. The distance between heaven and hell is the distance between your head and your heart. I said that to the young people uh, on Friday, junior high, and said, you'd have been thrilled. I wish you could have been here. Junior high, we had hundreds of young people standing last Friday. Senior high, this whole place was packed with young people committing their lives fully to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the answer. The righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to God. That's the substitutionary purpose of the cross. But then, two friends, there's the suffering passion of the cross. What does it say? Christ died for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring us to God. Substitutionary passion of the cross. I think of Mel Gibson's film, The Passion of the Christ. You see those nails going in. You actually don't see the soldier. All that you see is the hands. They're actually the hands of Mel Gibson. What he's saying is that it was my sin that's nailing Jesus Christ to the cross. And we see those horrible scenes in the passion of the Christ. He had to back off. As he studied Roman crucifixion, it was so horrific. He couldn't show it all. It was bad enough. But he couldn't really show it all, what Jesus Christ went through. There was emotional suffering. I think of these verses in Luke. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, strong term, he prayed more earnestly and he sweat like great drops of blood falling to the ground. Even his blood inside him was coming out through his skin, realizing that the what's ahead, the emotional suffering of the cross. Father, take this cup, this cup. He had to drink it all. This cup that was filled with all the vileness of the world. The sin <clears throat> that we read about every day, the murders, the rapes, the filth, the language, the selfishness, the sin of the world. This is the cup from every one of us in the world. And he took that cup and he drank it all. He had to drink it all. That's the emotion. He, he realized what was going to be ahead of him. But then, of course, there's the physical suffering of the cross 
I'm not going to go into it too deeply this morning, just to say this, that this body that was lashed to pieces like we saw in the movie, bits of flesh being flung through the air, this body that was cut to pieces was pushed down the Via Dolorosa, to the place called Skull Hill Calvary, nailed to that cross, raised and dropped into that prepared socket in the ground. And there he hung for six agonizing, torturous hours, hanging on the cross in agony that we couldn't possibly believe. When I was in Jerusalem, I went to the Rockefeller Museum and I saw the ankle bone of a slave with a nail steel driven through it, obviously from crucifixion. But that's the horror of crucifixion cannot be fully explained to us. The doctors, when they tell us about it, they talk about how horrific it really is to hang on a cross, oftentimes for days. Hanging on a cross, the agony of of crucifixion. The Romans knew how to bring law and order. People feared crucifixion. Because on the cross, you died of suffocation. If Jesus on the cross wants to take air into his lungs, he must pull himself up on the nails in agony, you can imagine. Breathes air into his lungs. The pain becomes so great, he drops into unconsciousness again. This went on for three hours, nine in the morning till 12 midday. The intense heat of the Palestinian sun. His body a raging inferno of pain. His tongue like a great blob in his mouth. The crown of thorns probably wearing still, being driven into his brow, hanging on that cross in tremendous agony. And at 12 o'clock, God said, that's enough. And he enveloped the whole world in a supernatural darkness. And out of that darkness, he screams these words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, the Father, my God, the Holy Spirit, why have you forsaken me? I'm all alone here on the cross. Why? Because God cannot look upon sin. The physical sufferings of the cross, but there's the spiritual sufferings of the cross. The darkness that he's going through. God is a holy God. Can't look at when Darren's saying, Holy, 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 you'd better believe it. God is awesomely holy. The holiness of God. Listen to what it says. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer. And through and, and though the Lord makes and through it the Lord makes his life a guilt offering. Habakkuk 1:13. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. God had to turn his back on his son. As Jesus Christ hung there on that cross for six agonizing hours. There's the spiritual suffering that he was going through as well, as well as the physical suffering, as well as the emotional suffering. That's the suffering passion of the cross. But then too, there's the settled provision of the cross. I love this. He died how much? Once for all. When he went to the cross, it was nine o'clock in the morning. In the temple complex, they were sacrificing the morning sacrifice. When he died three o'clock in the afternoon, there was the afternoon sacrifice. (coughs) Hundreds and hundreds of animals. There was actually troughs that were taken that would carry the blood out of Jerusalem and then down into the Valley of Hinnon. Sacrifice after sacrifice. But now, once for all, Priests forget offering sacrifices. Jesus Christ has died once for all on the cross. The Bible says, having canceled the written code with all of its regulations that was against us and that that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. The settled provision of the cross. At the end of that six agonizing hours, three o'clock in the afternoon, Light starts to come on the earth. And Jesus Christ screams the greatest word that this world has ever ever heard. He screams out, Tetelestai, Tetelestai, it is finished. It's like an artist putting that last paintbrush mark on the canvas. And then he stands back and he says, Tetelestai, finished, paid in full, I've completed it. Like when you walk out of a cell, they put the, all the, the things while you're in the cell, the charge against you, 
And then when it's all finished, the jailer takes it, writes a word across the slate, Tillestai, paid in full. When Jesus died on that cross, he paid in full all of the sin that we've committed against God so that you and I can come back to God. It's the greatest word that it was ever spoken. Why? Because it was spoken by the greatest person that ever lived. Jesus Christ is the greatest person that ever walked the dusty streets of this earth. It's the greatest announcement that's ever been proclaimed. Think of all the announcements. World War II. The war is over. People are celebrating. That was a great announcement. But this announcement affects the whole world. The greatest number of people ever reached by any announcement. People all around the world are being affected by this great announcement. But then too, it announced the greatest victory that was ever won. Because when Jesus was hanging on the cross, there was a battle. A battle between Satan, the forces of evil, and the forces of God. And when he screamed out, finished, I've done it. I've paid the price. Victory is ours. Now man can come back to God. That's why there's power in the cross. That's why the cross is so important. That's why the only way that you and I can get to be with God in his heaven is to come to the cross. But thank God there's the saving power of the cross. What does it say? To bring you to God. That's the whole purpose. God wants to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but are made alive in the spirit. We don't worship a crucifix on a cross. We worship one who is alive. Jesus is alive, friends, and he's here today. And he's knocking at our hearts. They're saying, let me come in. I want to come into your life. I want to change your life. I want to give you a life which is worth living. Life more abundantly because I have that power. I love you. I died for you. If you're the only person in the world, I would have died just for you. But you might decide that you're going to delay your decision. Never do that. There's the danger of delay. There's, there's the danger of hardening your heart. And you can do that. Some of you have come from Christian families. And you've heard this message many times, but you harden your hearts and you've heard the message and you don't respond and little by little, you harden your hearts. Then to this, the danger of losing your soul. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Why is your soul so valuable? It's only valuable because of the price put on it. An artwork is only valuable because of the price put on it. Your soul is so valuable because it is eternal. It's going to last forever. When we had a, had a little baby boy, the first one, I looked down at this little unwashed form and we were crying like anything. But it hit me that Dorothy and I were responsible for bringing into the world an immortal soul. You are going to live for eternity. We either die in the Lord or we die in our sins. That's why it's important. Your soul is incredibly important. Don't lose your soul. There's the danger of going to hell. If we re There's no alternate Calvary. If we say no to that, if we go to hell, we have to climb over the dying, bleeding form of redemptive love. Jesus dying on that cross. If you say no to that, there's no other way. You'll never get to heaven any other way. We've got to come to the cross. And then there's the danger of missing heaven. Just imagine missing heaven. The glories, the beauty of heaven. It's wonderful. I conducted a funeral of someone in our church this past week. This wonderful lady that had gone on to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I spoke about heaven. The capital of heaven in Revelation the new Jerusalem, telling of the beauties and the joy that she's enjoying right now. Don't miss out on heaven. And then too, there's the danger of missing the rapture because at any moment, Jesus Christ is going to come again. The Lord himself should ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I'm looking forward to that day. 
<laughs> I'm not looking forward to an undertaker. I'm looking forward to the upper taker, okay? <laughs> we may not be good looking, but we're good lookers. We're looking for Jesus to come. And if he came at this moment in time, would your seat be vacant or would you still be sitting there? Make sure that you've made that decision to receive Christ. There's the danger of sudden death. We don't even know when we're going to pass out of this world. We like to think that we've got it all together, but we never know. Friends, come with me back to the cross. There's three soldiers around the cross. Some soldiers are gambling for his garments. And one soldier went home that day with a robe of Jesus Christ. He was a materialist. All that he wanted was the things of this world. Didn't care that Jesus was dying for him. And don't be like that this morning. Don't be indifferent to the fact that Jesus has died for you. He died on that cross because he loves you. <clears throat> this soldier didn't care less. All that he wanted was what he could get out of this world. There was another soldier that day. Jesus had died. Body slumped on the cross. And as one last gesture of hate, this soldier went up with his spear, drove it up through his side and into his heart, ripped it out, and out came blood and water, showing that Jesus was truly dead. Listen. You can't get closer to the blood of Jesus Christ than that. He would have had the blood on his spear, probably splashed on his uniform, certainly on his feet. He would have trod underfoot the precious, redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. You can't get closer to that. My friends, listen, I say this with all the love in my heart. If you go out of this place this morning... So know to Jesus Christ, you are treading underfoot the blood of Jesus Christ. He's given his best for you. He could give no more. God the Father gave his best. He gave the best of heaven. If we say no to that, there's no other alternative. We are separated from God for the whole of eternity. But one other soldier was there. He looked at how Jesus died. I've got a beautiful picture of him in our office. It's a centurion, and he's got his breastplate there, and he's got his medals on the, on, the, on the breastplate. You see, as the soldier went into battle, if they won a battle, they would get a medal. And this centurion has got very... The Calvary is over. The body is gone. There's still blood on the pavement. He's kneeling down, and he's picking up the crown of thorns. Thoughts are going through his mind. If you're going to battle, and you see a man with those many bat medals on you're not going to take him on he was very successful in battle but this centurion when he looked at how jesus died smote his breast he said truly this man is the son of god and i'm going to ask you to acknowledge that this morning friends say jesus is the son of god and right now i'm going to make sure of my relationship to christ and i'm going to receive him into my heart to be my saviour and Lord. Would you bow with me in prayer, please? I'm going to ask that every head be bowed, every eye closed. Let's make sure that Jesus is not just in our heads, but that Jesus is in our heart. I want to pray a simple prayer with you, phrase by phrase out loud. And as I pray this prayer with you, pray it silently, but God will hear it. He knows what we're thinking right now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O oh God. He knows what we're thinking. And I'm going to ask that you pray this prayer with me and make sure that Jesus Christ is really in your heart, that you know him, and that you're going to live eternally with him. Such a simple prayer, but that's all that it takes. And as you pray this simple prayer, on the authority of God's word, Jesus Christ will come into your heart. So pray this prayer with me. I'll pray it out loud, phrase by phrase. You pray along with me silently. God's waiting to hear it. And Jesus Christ is standing there saying, look, I'm, I'm standing outside your life and I want to come in. Open your heart. Let me come in. Let's make sure of it this morning. If you're not sure that you have eternal life, if you're not certain that if you died at this moment in time, that you'd go to be with God in his heaven. 
let's make certain right now. Pray this prayer with me silently. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, today I come to you. I thank you that you love me. That you died for me and rose again. Forgive my sinfulness, Lord Jesus. I turn from my sin to you. Lord, come into my life. Help me to live for you day by day. I don't trust my self-righteousness. I want your righteousness. I now receive your gift of eternal life. So we're bowed in prayer. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I know that many here this morning just made sure that Jesus is in your heart and life. And if you prayed that prayer with me, I'm going to ask while heads are bowed, please, and eyes are closed, just raise your hand nice and high. Would you do that? Say, yes, Bill, I prayed with you in the prayer. Just slip it up nice and high. Good. Once I've seen it, just drop it down. Wonderful, wonderful. Others, just put it up nice and high. Young people, just put up your hand. Wonderful. That's great. God bless you. Just put them down. That's great. If you've not yet raised your hand, but you prayed the prayer, slip it up nice and high. Would you do that quickly? Put it up nice and high. Yeah, that's great. God bless you. Now listen, the Apostle Paul could say this because there's daily righteousness when we live our daily lives for Christ. It's practical righteousness. And we need the power of Christ to live that kind of practical righteousness day by day. Self-righteousness, imputed righteousness, or credited righteousness, we call it. But then too, there's practical righteousness. I'm going to ask that right now, that as believers, we re-surrender our lives to Christ. Thinking all that he's done for us. The Apostle Paul could say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Notice, Paul could say, I am crucified with Christ. You see, that's the key. It's not do, it's done. We don't have to do anything. It's all done. But the key is to allow the risen Christ to live through you. You see, that's why you're not being victorious in your Christian life, because you're trying to do it yourself. And you're not allowing the risen Christ to live through your life with power and victory. That's why, men, you're exploding with anger. That's why, ladies, you're obsessed with worry and anxiety. That's why, young people, you're plagued with thoughts. Why? Because we're trying to do it ourselves. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. It's allowing the risen Christ to live through us day by day. And some of you have been on the road for a number of years, but you need a a fresh touch from the Lord. The Bible says, revive us, the Lord, in the midst of the years. And perhaps this morning you need a fresh touch from God wherever you are right now. Maybe you've plateaued in your Christian experience. Well, we can have a fresh touch from God. Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. I'm going to ask that we rededicate our lives totally to Christ right now. I'm going to ask that you just pray this simple little prayer with me again. Give me the privilege of leading you in prayer out loud. And you pray silently along with me. And friends, this morning, right now, we can have a fresh touch of God upon our lives in revitalization and revival. That's what we need. A fresh touch from God. I often think a person needs to be reconverted every few years. We need that fresh touch from God. Some of you are are weary in well-doing and you're exhausted because you're doing it in your own strength. 
but let's ask God for his refreshment right now. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, silently, dear Lord Jesus Christ, in a fresh and new way today, I totally surrender my life to you. Lord, fill me now with your power and with your spirit. Wash me and f- cleanse me afresh in your precious, precious blood. Lord Jesus, here and now, I totally surrender my life to you. Lord, live through me. And I know that there are many of you this morning that have prayed that prayer. And in a moment, I'm going to ask, Pastor Peter has said, I'm going to give an invitation. I'm going to ask those of you who prayed that first prayer with me to just leave where you're standing and come on down here to the front and stand for the Lord. I have friends here today that will come and stand with you. We just want to have a short prayer and give you a booklet, welcome to the family and encourage you. Won't keep you long, but it's so important that you come. But then, too, if you prayed that second prayer, to rededicate your life to the Lord, it would be good if you came as well. Why? I think of Peter on the shores of Galilee. And the Lord restored him in front of the other disciples, and he went out and won thousands for Jesus Christ. And this morning, we need a fresh touch of God upon our lives. We are plagued in this society with a spirit of timidity. But we need to come on fire for Christ. I wish I could scoop you up, take you to Malaysia and Indonesia and India and other places where the believers are on fire for Christ. We need that fresh touch from God this morning and we can have it. I'm going to ask that you come forward as well and share with another brother or sister and have a word of prayer and say, well, this morning I want to rededicate my life to Christ and go on and live for him in power. Oh, let's do it this morning. Would you stand with me as I pray, please, everyone standing? We're going to give the invitation. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father who is in heaven. If you deny me, I'll deny you before my Father who is in heaven. It's a wonderful thing to come forward and confess Christ. And I'm going to encourage you to do it. Don't let anything stop you. Just slip out from wherever you are in a moment and just come on down to the front and standing just facing towards the platform and God will bless you every step of the way. This is a wonderful moment, friends. Don't miss it. The Lord is here. There's going to be a voice speaking to your heart saying, go forward. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. You come quickly this morning and stand for Christ. Father, I pray now that as I give the invitation, All those of our friends who prayed that first prayer or the second prayer right now, Lord, I pray that they will come quickly and proudly and stand for the Lord Jesus Christ because we ask it in his mighty and holy name. Those of you who prayed with me from all over, please, would you just come and join us down here at the front? Come and stand for the Lord. Would you do that right now? God bless you. Every one of you that prayed, God bless you, man. Others as well, if you've prayed with us, just get out and come up there, up the seats. Would you just start coming right now? Stand down here in the front. That's great. Just over to the center here. That's great. Just come across here. Up around here. That's wonderful. Up through here, just start coming. (laughs) Come on, men, this morning. That's great. Up through here. Men, there's some ladies here this morning. You need a fresh touch from God. You can feel that tug. You start coming right now. Husbands and wives come together. Just take each other's hand and come and stand for the Lord. That would be wonderful. Come on, young people to, today. Start to come and stand for Christ. God bless you. That's good. That's great. God bless you.
going to close after this next verse and chorus. It'll go so quickly. But let me tell you what's happening. You're standing there. There's a little voice speaking to your heart, and you know it. There's an urge in your heart saying, go forward. That's God. That's God, the Holy Spirit, speaking to you. And there's some men here today that God wants to take a hold of and use for himself. There's some ladies that want to, God wants you to become a mighty woman of God. And you know that you need to take this moment to resurrender your life to Christ. You may be over there in our seniors' wing, and you're hearing this too. Don't plateau. I think of Caleb, 85 years old. He said, Give me this mountain, give me the strongholds, give me those giants. Didn't plateau in his life. Don't plateau. Run to the finish line. Give it everything that you've got. Live for Jesus Christ. And you're standing there. God's speaking to you. And you make that first step and God will help you with every other step. Thank you, Darren. Singers, as you're singing on, just get out and come with me right now. We're waiting. We're praying. Come quickly. Go so quickly. If you come and start right now. of you have come forward we welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and that's good to see you standing that's what the baptism is all about public stand for Christ and you're standing for the Lord in a fresh and a new way for some of you this morning some for the first time and Pastor Peter is going to guide you now we just want to have a word of prayer with you give you some literature so uh, God bless you those tears are precious to the Lord man keep crying them I love them. that's wonderful well God bless you all this morning pray for tonight if you can come back and join us if you're between 9 and 99, you're welcome to mark tonight, okay? Pray for the young people because we want to see those young people coming to Christ. Thank you, Peter, as you lead us on. There's some counselors here in this group, and so they're going to lead you back. And we'll just head back in that direction to the rooms in the back. And they'll meet with you, give us some material, pray with you, and they'll take it from there. So you can just move out now if you would, as I pray. Father, thank you for this time that we've had with your word to us and we thank you that by your spirit you're at work in each one of our hearts in one way or another this morning and we thank you for that we pray for each one of these men and women and young people and we ask that by your spirit you'll continue to work in their hearts and lives draw them closer to you day by day as they learn more from you as they stand out and, and step out in faith to trust you and to recommit their lives in many cases as well father we thank you for this time that we've spent together we worship you and we adore you as we commit the remainder of our day to you and our week and our lives as we recommit again this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, you can just go that way, please. Now, some of the counselors. Uh,